What's up guys, back again with another video in the Spigot series. This time I'm going to show you how to make a menu manager system. So um, the reason I'm doing this is because I haven't really seen a good way that people have done this. I've looked all over the forums and done some googling. I haven't really seen a good system that people use for managing menus. And what I mean by menu system is just basically um, if you have a complex plugin that has many different GUIs like uh, a inventory GUI that switches to another inventory GUI like many of those then it gets very complicated and there needs to be a good way of doing that because let me go ahead and first show you a bad way of doing it okay so this is my shop plugin that I was working on a few months ago and I have a class here that represents my menu system okay and for each menu that I have I don't know how many menus there are I could count but um, there's over a thousand lines of code here and for each menu I have here you have a static, or not a static method, but you have a method here that opens up the menu, creates a new inventory object, initializes it or whatever, um, or reassigns it rather, because we have the inventory object here, um, right here. So we're just creating a new inventory and blah, blah, blah for each menu, setting the items for that menu, and then uh, displaying it to the user. And we're doing this for every single menu within the uh, the project, right? So this is very disgusting because it's, first of all, it's a thousand lines of code and uh, it's not very organized so we want to introduce like a good design pattern if we can and uh, yeah so also besides that having you know all of these methods all together which first of all is really hard to deal with because you have to scroll down find what you're looking for um, you know it's there's not like a set place for each menu right you have to look for the method for that menu and then also what if you want to transfer data across menus you have all these private uh, variables up here in objects that you know really start to clutter up your menu system okay so this is for like transferring data across inventories right because inventories you have to recreate each time you can't you can't uh, basically resize an inventory so every time you open up a new menu you have to create a new inventory therefore it's kind of complicated to transfer data so uh, you basically have to pass it in and do a bunch of crazy stuff so we'll get into that later but yeah it's really complicated and since you have all these here you have to go down here and create getters and setters for each of those values which make it even more cluttered so yeah it's a pain in the butt it's really complicated so we want to create a really um, nice and robust system that makes it much more simplified much more uh, decentralized because it's all centralized into one class so let's take a look at um, one of the projects that I've made recently that uses this new system so it's actually my quartermaster plugin here so my quartermaster plugin um, if you if you were one of the people that watched the episodes where I was working on that plugin in the Spigot series, you can see that I've changed a lot since then. Um, I actually did not I didn't even finish showing you how to make the plugin because it got so complicated and I, you know, had to change so many different things. Um, one of those things was I had to change from MongoDB to SQL because MongoDB was a shit storm of itself. But also the menu system was a pain in the butt. It was just like the other menu system that I just showed you but way worse maybe like 2,000 lines of code because it's such a big menu system so as you can see here I have a new system so I have a menu package and then inside that menu package I have all of these menus here so we have a abstract menu class which represents what a menu is and then we have different uh, subclasses of that menu class that represent each menu so instead of having all the menus inside of one class with uh, a method for each menu you have different menu classes that represent custom menus and even cooler is that um, also you have to, so let me go back to the, the bad plugin. Uh, so if you go to menu listener, we have this giant uh, listener uh, event here that listens for whenever you click on the inventory, right? So what you have to do is whenever someone clicks on an inventory, you have to see if it's a custom inventory by checking the title. So we have to check the title of each and every single menu that we click on. And if it matches one of our custom menus, then we can handle it however we want to handle it. But, uh, you know, it's just, look how many different else if statements we have here. It's just a pain in the butt. So decentralizing this also will, will provide a much better system. So if we go back to here, a menu um, is capable of handling the menu and setting the items for the menu in one place. So let me show you what I mean by that. So in the, in the new lock menu, we override the handle menu method, and we also override the set menu items method. So in one place, you have both the code for handling the menu and you have the code for both, uh, and you have the code for setting the items of the menu. So it's all in one place. Everything that has to do with this particular new lock menu menu, it's all in one place. So that's very nice. 
So you're separating all of the menu logic from all the other menus. They're all in their own unique place. And then if we go to the menu listeners uh, class here, we can see that, look how short the code is for our menu. It's so smaller compared to what it was before. All we need is just a simple uh, thing that delegates uh, the, it's basically going to get the menu object and then uh, it's going to use polymorphism to determine, it's going to call the handle menu uh, method here and it's going to call the method for whichever menu it is. So it's, you'll, we'll explore that more later, but it's just so beautiful compared to what we had to deal with before. So yeah, so we're going to look at how this works and we're going to introduce a, we're going to make a plugin and we're going to see how we can use this new system to make our plugin really nice, to make a simple GUI system. So we're going to start from the ground up build the system and then use the system all in one go so you can uh, hopefully you're excited for that and so let me go uh, show you this real quick so right here I have a GitLab repository so I have all of the code for my menu system which is going to be all of the code for this episode I coded it ahead of time but the reason I did that not just you know to be prepared for this video but also I'm going to leave this for you so every time you want to make a GUI system for your plugins you can come here use this template and then copy the classes into your plugin. So for example, we have the menu system, uh, the menu uh, class here, the abstract class. You can just copy all of this code here and then use it in your project. So without having to rewatch this video, you can come to here, look at the code, and it even has all these comments here so you can actually understand what it's doing, how it works, and so yeah, um, this is pretty cool. So we're gonna be using this uh, because I, you know, I haven't memorized all of my code, obviously, but because uh, it gets really complicated. And also we have something called um, a, pa a paginated menu, which is a special menu that um, is a subclass of the menu. So it's a paginated menu, but what it does, it enables you to uh, have pages inside. Of you. So let's say you have a menu that you know it's displays a bunch of items. Um, and uh, so the, the max amount of items that you can fit on one inventory is 54, right? Because 9 times 5 is, no, wait, 9 times 6, right? <laughs> 9 times 6 is 54, right? So you can't go beyond that, right, for an inventory. So what you want to do here is create a paginated menu so that you can scroll throughout those items. And we'll look at that more later. So this is going to be like a specialized version of the menu, and it's going to be really sexy. But yeah, so check this out. There will be a link for this in the description below. Make sure you bookmark this in case you ever need to have a complex menu system in your plugin. So it's going to be really nice. Yeah, so let's get started here. Let's show you how we can make a menu manager from the ground up and how we can use it to make a menu, uh, menu system, okay? So we're just going to make a new plugin here. So me.codysimpson. And we'll give it, an, we need a project name, so we'll call this menu manager plugin tutorial. Actually, we'll just say menu manager tutorial. There we go. And that's about it for that. Menu manager tutorial. And by the way, if you have any um, suggestions on how we can improve the system, then go ahead and let me know in the comment section or message me on Discord, whatever you want to do. Because, uh, you know, I've tried my best to make this menu system, but maybe there's something better out there, something that I haven't thought of. So, yeah, be sure to let me know if you find anything better. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just to find a simple command so that we can test our menu on. And true to my nature, I'm going to make something really stupid, like a command that allows you to kill yourself. So um, we're called the, we'll call this the suicide command. And this is just going to be a simple command that opens up a GUI that allows you to press yes or no to kill yourself or not. Right? So let's do that. Of course, since we're implementing the command executor, we want to implement all the methods. This is just one method, obviously, so return true. And uh, we're not going to do much here. We're going to say if sender instance of player then let me zoom in for you guys that might help so if sender instance of player then player p is equal to casting the sender to the player and so then from there we can open up the uh the gui for our suicide command so we need to create that so we're going to make a new package here called uh we'll call it menu system so menu system and we're going to first define what a menu is so we're going to make a new class called menu and this is going to be an abstract class, so public abstract class menu. And let's think about what we want to store in every single menu. So what makes a menu a menu? What kind of information do we want to store in each menu? And how do we want to handle that? So the first thing we want to uh, define, the most obvious thing would be an inventory, because every menu needs an inventory to have the items, right? 
inventory. It's going to be protected so that in the subclasses of our menu class, we can access this variable. And by the way, for this episode, you want to have a good understanding of object-oriented principles. So the most, the most, the thing you need to know the most is inheritance. That's the the main thing. But uh, yeah, hopefully you know that if you're working with Spigot anyway. So the next thing we want to do is also define a, a player menu utility class. And we'll explain this in a second. So player menu utility. I'll just I'll just explain it now. So a player menu utility. So player menu utility is a class or an object. We're gonna make objects out of it, obviously. And see, and so each player, as they open up a menu, they're gonna have a player menu utility object with that menu. And we're gonna use that object to transfer data across the menus, right? So let's say you have one menu. So you do the suicide command, it opens up a menu, and then you click on something, and then you go to another menu. And so how do you transfer the data from one inventory to another inventory? Um, you may think it's really simple, but it's actually kind of complicated, especially when you're, comp when you're trying to transfer many different objects or primitive variables. Um, you can't just pass it all through the const constructor. I mean, you could, but that would be really complicated. So the easiest way to do this is to make a player menu utility which is a custom object that each player has, and they only have one because you know there's only there's no, no there's no need for a player to have multiple player ut utilities because they're only going to have one menu open at a time, right? So, yeah, we want to make sure that player each player has only one, right? So, just to recap, what that means is basically it's just going to be a special object that contains the data that we want to transfer across menus. So, the, for this simple suicide command, we're not going to really need this too much but you'll see how we need it later on when we do the second command, okay? So let's think about what type of stuff we want to store in here. Um, obviously, so each player is going to have their own player menu utility object, right? So we want to, you know, keep track of who owns this object. So private player owner, and then we can make a constructor here. So code generates constructor and then owner. So as you create one of these objects, you're going to pass in the player that owns this object, and then we're going to set it. And then let's create getters and setters also. So getters and setter, there we go. And we're going to do that for each uh, thing that each piece of data that we want to store, we're going to create a variable for it, and then we're going to create getters and setters for it. Uh, but the constructor we can leave how it is, okay? So, like I said, we're going to explore this more later. But uh, so after we create this class here, like I said, every player is going to have one of these. So let's go into the main class here and define a hash map that keeps track of each player and their player menu, uh, player menu utility objects, okay? So that we can keep track of each player's menu utility and make sure that they only have one, right? So private hash, private static final hash map. And so the key is gonna be the player. So each player is gonna have one player menu utility. So, so we'll just call this the player menu utility map, I guess. And then we're gonna, oops, then we're gonna do new hash map. So pretty simple, right? We're just gonna create a simple hash map that keeps track of each player and their menu utility. And then we're going to code generate, actually no, we're gonna make this custom. So what we wanna do here is make a method here that is able to grab, it's gonna be provided a player, so we'll code it out. So public static player, it's gonna return a player menu, menu utility and we're going to call this get player menu utility and we're going to pass in a player p and what this is going to do is for each player that you pass in whenever you call this method we're going to get that player's menu utility if they have one so we're going to search the hash map and if they have uh, if this player is already in the hash map that means that that player has a player menu utility object created but if that player is not in the hash map if, the, if there's no key that matches that player object that means that that player does not have a player menu utility object yet. So we're going to create one for that player. Okay. So that shouldn't be too hard. So we're just going to create a player menu utility object here. So player menu utility. And so we're going to say if, um, so if we want to see if that hash map above has the player menu utility, like I said. So if player menu utility dot, can, oh wait, if player, what's it called? Player menu utility map, player menu utility map. So if our map contains the key of P, so player, if it already has that player, then we want to return player menu utility map dot get and then provide that. So what it's going to do is grab the player menu utility uh, that's already in the hash map and then return it 
But if there isn't one already, if there if the hash map does not contain that player, that means that there is no player yet. So we want to create a player menu utility object for that player and then store it in the hash map, okay? So we're gonna do that. So player menu utility is equal to new player menu utility. And then of course we need to pass in the owner of the player menu utility, so pass in P. And then now we need to store that into the hash map. So player menu utility map dot put, pass in the key, so the player, and then pass in the player menu utility object. And there we go, so that should do that for us. And then finally, now that we've created it, we also want to return it because the whole point of the method here is to return a player menu utility. So return, and we can just return player menu utility directly since we've just created it here. There's nothing to grab. I mean, we can grab it since we just put it, but we just created it, okay? So this is a very simple object that we're gonna use to grab a player menu utility. And like I said, if they don't have one, we're gonna create one. If they do have one, we're gonna return the one they have, okay? So let's go back to our menu object here. So we're gonna create a second protected member value here. And we're gonna call this player menu utility. And this is gonna represent the player menu utility that we're gonna pass into each menu object so that we have information uh, inside the menu on who owns the menu and whatever else data that we want to transfer inside the menu, okay? So uh, we want to then, so let's make a constructor for this menu class. So public menu, and what we want to do is pass in a player menu utility like that. And then we'll set the one. So this dot player menu utility is equal to player menu utility. All right, so now that we have that, let's define some abstract uh, methods here so that each menu can define their own functionality, okay? So we'll do public abstract string and we'll call this get oops get menu name so this is going to allow the subclasses of this menu class to define the name of their menu and we're going to use this name here when we create the inventory so we know what to title the inventory so you see that in a second so second we want to set the slots so get slots so public and if you're a little lost right now don't worry we'll actually you know use this in a second so don't worry about that so hopefully that helped you understand it so public abstract void handle menu so what this is going to do is you're going to accept a inventory click event and then we're going to handle that event inside the menu all right and then finally we're going to have a pub public abstract void set menu items which is a method that allows each menu to set what items are going to appear in that menu and then we're going to have a public void open method. So it's not going to be abstract since every uh, menu is going to open the same way. So what we're going to do here is define menu. So uh, I mean inventory. So inventory is equal to bucket dot create inventory. And so the first thing we need is a owner. So we're going to set the owner to null for now. And we'll actually change that in a second. But for, null, for, uh, for now, it's null. And the second thing we need is the size of the menu. So where do we get the size? We get it from here. So get slots. So get slots. Oops get slots and then we're, we need a title so how do we get the title we use this up here so get menu name and there we go so now that we created the inventory we want to use the set menu items method to put items into this inventory that we've just created so we'll do this dot set uh, menu items and that will put the items into that inventory and then finally now that we have created this inventory put the items inside of it we want to display this inventory to the owner of this menu. So how do we figure out who owns this menu that we're about to open? We can use the player menu utility. So that's the information we can grab from it. So player menu utility dot get owner and then we could do dot open inventory and then pass an inventory, the inventory that we just created. So there's one more thing we want to do is um, we want to do implements inventory holder. So it's a little complicated to explain right now since we, we're not gonna do this quite yet, but basically this is gonna be useful for whenever we do the menu listener. So whenever we um, handle the, uh, the inventory click event, we're able to reverse engineer the inventory back into the menu object and then call it the corresponding handle menu method. And don't worry, we'll look at that in a second if you're like, what the hell did you just say? So we just need to change this from null to this. So now the inventory holder of this inventory is the class itself, okay? So we'll see how that works in a second. But anyway, so now we have defined what a inventory menu, actually, so one more thing here, we also want to, so this inventory um, interface defines a method called get inventory. So we're gonna uh, override that method. So override methods, and we'll do, see, you can see that org.bucket.inventory.inventory holder 
provides the get inventory method here. So we're just going to override that and return inventory just like that. All right, so now that we have a, a menu, we've defined what a menu is and what methods it has, we can then start creating our menus here. So we'll make a, a package called menu. And inside of here, we'll have each of our menus, okay? So the first menu we're going to make is the menu that we're going to use with our suicide command. We're going to call this the suicide confirm menu. Suicide confirm menu. Very nice. And so since it's going to be a menu, we want to extend menu. So now we have created a subclass of menu and you can see that it's red here because since menu is an abstract class, we have to override the abstract method. So implement methods. And now we have all these methods here. So what we want to do here is use these methods to define what custom attributes that this menu this this menu has, right? So for example, we have this overridden get menu name method here, so we can then define the name of this menu. So we can provide the title of this menu. So we'll call this the uh, confirm kill yourself question mark. So that's the name of this menu. And then we want to give it nine slots. You can do whatever you want. We can also provide the handle menu logic, and then you can also provide the set menu items logic. So we'll do this one first. So what this is going to be is the method that defines what objects, I mean, what items you want to put into this inventory. And so let's say we want to have a yes or no button in our inventory. So we can click yes if we want to kill ourselves, and then no if we don't want to kill ourselves. So we need to create those items. So here we go. I've got these items created here. So we have the yes item stack, and then uh, we have the no item stack. And they just say um, yes if you want to kill yourself and no if you don't want to kill yourself, basically. And yes, I think that's it. So yes, yep, that looks good to me. And so now we have created these item stacks. We want to do inventory, which um, we are grabbing from here. So we're grabbing the inventory object from here, uh, from the superclass. It's a protected value, so that means that we can grab it in the subclass. So we're just grabbing the corresponding inventory and doing dot set item. So we're going to set it in the third or the fourth slot because it starts from zero. And we're just going to pass in yes because that's the item. And then we'll do the same thing for no. So set item five so for the sixth slot and then pass in no. Okay, cool. So we have to find what items are going to be inside of this inventory. But now we want to define what happens when we click on the inventory, how we're going to handle what happens whenever we click on these items. Okay. So as you can see here, we're passing in the image, the, uh, the event itself. So that means that we can do a switch statement here so e dot get current item so we're going to get the item that we clicked on and then do dot get type so each case here so get type if you don't know returns a material for the item that you clicked on so each case of the switch statement can be as you can see here it's providing suggestions right here so you can provide a material name for each of these cases here so we can define what happens when they click on a certain material in our inventory okay so let's say that we click on the emerald, right? So we want to do case emerald. And then, so when they click on the emerald, what we want to do is kill ourselves, right? So, so first we're actually just going to close the inventory. So get who clicked dot uh, close inventory. And then now we're going to kill ourselves, okay? So e dot get who clicked dot set health. And we're going to set it to zero. And there we go. And then, uh, yeah, it's about it for that. And then we'll just break for that case. And so case, now we have another button here called a no, right? But the material is a barrier. So we want to determine what happens whenever they click on a barrier for this inventory. So case barrier, e dot get who clicked dot send message. So if they click no, that means they don't want to kill themselves. So we'll just send them a message saying, change your mind. Oh, kind of dark, but there we go. And so then we'll just close the inventory, right? So e dot get who clicked dot close inventory for the user, okay? And then break. All right, so just again, a recap. Um, this is just a simple method that defines what happens whenever you click on items within our custom inventory here, okay? And this one just sets the items for the inventory. And then one more thing here, you can see that it's still red. And this is because we need to create the constructor here. We just need to override the, the constructor from here, right? So yeah, that's all that's doing, and the error is now gone. So we're pretty much done defining what our menu is. Now we need to go and create a listeners package here. And we're gonna define a menu listener. So we wanna create a class here that is able to listen for whenever we click on an inventory, and then call the corresponding handle menu method, right? So let's check that out. So we'll create a 
class called menu listener. This is going to implement the listener class from bucket. And so we're going to create a new event handler. We'll call this public void on menu click. So this will be a inventory click event. E. There we go. So first things first, let's get the player that clicked on the inventory. So p dot get uh, p player p is equal to uh, e dot get who clicked, and we're just going to cast that to a player. There we go. Okay, so this is where the inventory holder thing comes into play. How can we figure out um, if the menu that we clicked on or the inventory that we clicked on is a special menu for our plugin, right? So normally we would just check the the title of the menu that we clicked on. So e dot get view dot get title dot equals ignore case and then you know the menu title but a better way is to do it like this so first we can grab the inventory holder that we clicked on because every single uh every single menu has an inventory holder right so unless it's null of course but still that's okay so inventory holder this we'll just call this holder so we're going to get the inventory holder of the inventory that we clicked on so e dot get uh clicked inventory or yeah get clicked inventory dot get holder and then now what we want to do is do if, so if the holder that we just got is an instance of menu, that means that it's a custom menu for our plugin. So how can it, you may wonder, how can it be that an inventory holder can be an instance of menu, which is our custom class that we have just created? And that's because menu implements inventory holder. So technically a menu is an inventory holder. So that means that in the reverse, a inventory holder can be a menu. So basically we're reverse uh, engineering this inventory holder that we have from this inventory that we clicked on back into a menu object if the inventory holder is a menu, a custom menu. So now that we know it's a custom menu, first things first, we can do uh, e.setCancel is equal to true. And then we could also, so then we could grab the menu. So menu menu is equal to uh, holder. So since we know our inventory holder is a menu, we can then create a menu and cast holder to a menu. And then once we have that menu object here, we can use menu dot handle menu and then just pass in the event itself, so E. So what that is gonna do is basically grab the inventory that we clicked on, see if it's a custom menu by looking at the inventory holder. And then if it is, we're gonna get the, that menu object that represents that custom menu. Since this custom menu is a subclass of menu, so it's going to grab that um, it's going to grab that menu object, convert that holder back into a menu, and then call the handle menu object, which will basically handle differently depending on which menu we clicked on, right? So this is going to, a good example of inheritance and polymorphism since um, our menu here is a subclass of menu. It inherits the handle menu object here, and it has to inherit it and override it, of course, because it's abstract in the menu superclass. But basically, since we have this uh, menu object here, we're able to call the handle menu object or method, which you know handles it. However, we you know define it to be handled in the subclass. Okay, so that's actually it for that. Uh, actually, one more thing we're going to add is the if uh, if the current item that we clicked on is null is equal to null, then we're just going to return. And this is just, uh, this isn't required, but this is just to avoid avoid null exceptions whenever we're clicking on air or outside of the inventory. You've maybe seen that in the past videos where I've clicked outside the inventory and you get a null exception for no reason. This is why, so just put that there and that will fix that issue for you. So yeah, this should be it. It's basically going to delegate to whatever menu needs to be handled if it is, if this inventory is a special menu object, okay? So yeah, that should be it for our suicide command. Um, one thing we need to do is go to our ma main class here and then register the command and the listener. So we'll do that now. So git command, we'll call this suicide set executor new suicide command. So now we just need to do the listener. So we'll do git server dot git plugin manager dot register events new uh, menu listener and then this. There we go. Cool, so that should register the command in the listener. Final thing we need to do is register the command in our plugin.yml. So we'll set this to 1.15. So commands, suicide, uh, description, kill yourself. Sorry if you hear my stomach, I'm freaking starving. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, we forgot to finish our command here. So we need to define what happens whenever they run the suicide command. So 
uh, we're going to do so we're going to need to make a new instance of suicide confirm menu and then open up the menu okay so we'll do suicide confirm menu suicide confirm menu or we we'll just call it menu that's fine is equal to new suicide confirm menu and we need to pass in a player menu utility so you may ask how do we get a player menu utility and we can get it from our main class so main manager tutorial dot get player menu utility and then pass in p and that's going to grab it or create it if we don't have one and then uh, return it right so we're creating a new suicide confirm menu so now that we have this object we can then do menu dot open and that's going to open the menu for us so that should do the job for us which is pretty cool and uh, so you can even shorten this even more if you want to. You can actually just do this and then just get rid of this and then throw open on the end of it. So that's just a, a quicker way of doing that. Um, so yeah, that's about it for that, the suicide command. So we should be able to run this now and it should work. So let's try it out. Oh, I just realized why it's not working. Um, I spelled suicide wrong. Shame on me. Okay, I'm back. So let's do slash suicide. And boom, we get our inventory. So it says confirm, kill yourself. So click no, and then it says change your mind, aww. So yeah, our menu works, that's really awesome. It's able to successfully open the menu. It's able to call the open method, of course. And then it's able to also do the menu listeners part of it. So it's able to determine if the menu that, or the inventory that we clicked on is a special menu object. And then if it is, then we're gonna create a menu object from that inventory holder, and then call the corresponding handle menu method for that menu object. So that's pretty cool. So it's able to handle it basically is what I'm trying to say. And so yeah, so let's try killing ourselves again. So suicide and boom, I killed myself. Great. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. Let's go back here one more time. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. We got a working menu system going here. Um, hopefully you can see the, um, the way that this menu system helps a lot, you know, since we have this generic, or not generic, but since we have this abstract menu class here, we're able to define what a menu is and then have these really helpful methods here so that we can have each menu with um, everything all in one place for that menu basically, right? So the handle part of the menu is going to be in the same place as where the menu uh, inventory items are going to be set. So yeah, hopefully this will help you with your plugins. Um, I still want to show you how to do a paginated menu, which is a special menu that is able to have pagination, which is obviously just, you know, uh, moving across different pages in case you have like a bunch of items that you can't display in 40 or 54 slots and uh, I'll do that next episode because this is a very long episode now so I'll be showing you that next episode how to use a paginated menu with our menu system here so like I said I'll leave the link for our menu system in the description below so you can check out the repository for it in case you want to use this menu system inside of your plugins okay also go ahead and join our discord server here we have a discord server with about, let's see, how many people do we have? Uh, members. Yeah, we have um, 1,100 members pretty much, so that's pretty cool. So make sure you join this community. There will be a link for this in the description below, so you can join this, ask questions if you need help, or just get some friends if you're lonely like this guy right here. Anyway, so I hope this helped you out. Stay tuned for the next episode where we check out the paginated menu. And if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe, and peace.